Hi everyone. Now that MuseCore 4 can use VSTs, it opens up a vast range of sounds that we can use in our music. This is not that new, but Muse Sounds has been rather overtaking the playback scene recently, with its new playback engine that looks ahead and has automatic sample changing for different articulations, dynamic markings and so on, which is certainly not so simple to achieve with VSTs, and the main reason why VSTs are best suited to being used in a digital audio workstation or DAW preferably with a MIDI keyboard and a whole bunch of automation faders to get the most out of the expressive sound that they can achieve. Today I want to try to use VSTs, free ones by the way, and MuseScore 4's workflow to create a quick but decent sounding bit of music. I'm going to do this primarily with MuseScore's chord symbols. I'm going to have only a single instrument to start. I've decided on a flute, but it really could be anything. I'm going to use D major and see where that leads me for today. Before I write in any notes, I'm going to start with some chord symbols to just give me a feel for the harmony that I'm using and where I can go with my melody. So I'm going to use Control K to start writing chord symbols. I've decided on these chords uh, before time, so I'm going to have a D major chord. moment these play back with simple piano chords, but I'm looking for something a bit nicer to play around with. And this is where VSTs come in. Let's have a look in our mixer. If it's not open already, we can open it from there. And we have a flute, we have a metronome, and here we have the chords.flute, or in other words, these chord symbols that are on the flute part. What's great about this separation is that I can simply change the playback sound to be anything I want. If you're looking for some good quality, interesting, and above all free VST libraries, I would definitely start with Spitfire Audio's Labs. If you're already comfortable downloading instruments with Spitfire Audio and Labs, feel free to skip ahead. If you're new to using VSTs, head over to spitfireaudio.com, hover over the free tab, and then click on Labs but feel free to check out their BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover and Piano Book for some other great libraries. There are so many sampled instruments here that are all free, so feel free to explore. But today, I'm going to use the Textural Pads instrument. So we can just click on Free Download, and you'll be prompted to install the Spitfire Audio software, which just keeps track of the various samples you've installed and provides a user interface for the different samples you download. I've already done that, so here is my Spitfire Audio app. I can go to Labs, and then simply click on Install on any of the libraries that I want. I can definitely re recommend this Labs Free Autograph Grand as well. In my installed ones, you'll see I've already got the textural pads. In MuseScore, we'll need to save the score, then close MuseScore, and open it up again just so that MuseScore can find those VST libraries that you've installed. Now I'll open my mixer again, go to the chords, and change this to VST3, Spitfire Audio, and Labs. That opens up our Labs window, and I can choose Textural Pads, or scroll down to any of the other ones that I have, but I'm going to choose Textural Pads. We can preview any of these, and I'm just going to choose the first one because that's the one that I like so far. And now, if we play this back, that's a much nicer thing to be able to work on top of. So, let's see what I can come up with.
something like that may work, let's have a listen. I think we need to make this a bit slower. Let's add a tempo marking. And dynamics. What am I doing without dynamics and articulations? All right, let's try that again, shall we? I can immediately hear that that should have been a C natural to go with my F major chord, but otherwise I'm not too, not feeling like that's too bad. Maybe we just need a little something here. I definitely like the interaction of the flute and the pads, however we're noticing that the pad comes in a bit late, like the flute hits that first chord but the pad only changes just afterwards, and that is a bit of a problem. Luckily, something we can solve. If I click on this labs again in our chords, it opens that up, and it's just some settings that we need to change. So first of all, there's the variation. We're also finding that that, that pad is a bit always the same. And let's change the attack. So we can see that this one has a long attack. I'm gonna turn that right down to about 10 milliseconds. And let's see if that makes a difference. problem I now have is that of course that this uh, chord just keeps going on and on. There are two ways to get rid of this problem. One is to add another chord symbol and call it NC or no chord. And that dies away in a very pleasing way. The other way is if I don't feel like adding that I can edit the settings for this chord by going to properties tab and there are actually so many different things we can do with this but the important one right now is the duration and I want to change that to until the end of the bar. Lovely. If you're interested in finding more about these chord symbols please I recommend you go and have a look at the handbook. Uh, there are, there's a whole section dedicated to these chord symbols and what they can do, the difference between the literal and the jazz interpretations, the different voicing options that you can have, which are really fantastic, um, and of course the duration. I also strongly recommend going and playing around with some of these settings in the labs. For instance, if I change this, how does that change the sound? Keep it open. Back to the beginning. So many things we can do with just this one pad uh, and that's never never mind even changing the different pad type so uh, yeah your options are really so open I think I found this was a really nice way to experiment with a melody and to 
play around with it with some chords. Very quick way to get into it. And of course, there's so many things I can do from here in MuseCore to get the notation that I want as well. But pads are a really good option for using these chord symbols in MuseCore to just get something going. That's it for now. Bye.